What's up guys, Mark here. Welcome back to Promix Academy. In this video, I'm gonna get you set up and started with some reverb in Logic Pro 10. Now, thankfully, Logic make this super simple. They've given us some really fantastic out-of-the-box reverb plugins and a whole bunch of presets to get us started. So without further ado, let's jump into a session and see what we can do. Um, I've got a really cool little funky tune idea that I've been working on. Uh, it's just made up of three instruments. We've got some drums, we've got a whirly, and we've got a, a lead uh, bit. Uh, yeah, can't remember what I used for that. Basically, these are all native logic uh, samplers and instruments uh, that I've used. Nothing external. Uh, let's have a quick listen to it without any reverb. Um, now, the first thing that strikes me is that although it, it has a really cool groove to it, it sounds like they've all uh, been recorded in a, a, a separate space. There's a whole bunch of reasons you might want to use some reverb, but one of my favorite ways to use reverb is to create the impression that uh, these instruments have all been recorded in the same room. So, the first thing I'm going to do is bring up the mixer. You can do that with uh, Command 2 to bring it up in a different window. We've, I've, I've highlighted my, my three tracks there, and rather than dumping a, uh, a reverb plugin on each of these channels here, I'm going to use a send to send it to an auxiliary channel, uh, which Logic does really, really easily. So uh, where it says sends, I'm going to click that down arrow. I'm going to choose an available bus. In this case, uh, bus 4 is available. And Logic is super smart. If it's a new bus that you've not used before, it will create one for you. You can see there it says bus 4 and our corresponding auxiliary channel is auxiliary 17. Uh, I can name that Room Reverb. Um, and that's the channel that I'm going to use my reverb on. Now before I do that, I want to make sure that uh, my sends are actually sending something to that channel. So there's a couple of ways I can do that. I can uh, just click, hold click on uh, that little button there and drag it up. You can see the levels increasing. Or a much quicker way I find to get you started is just to use Alt or Option and just click on it. It'll take you to zero dispels. So that means that it's going to be, each of these channels is going to be sending a uh, signal to our room reverb channel. And what we need to do now is choose a reverb for that channel. Um, now again, we've, we've got a bunch of reasons that we'd use reverb, but for this example, I just want to create the impression that these instruments were recorded in the same space. A super simple way to do that, and we're only going to use a Logic template. Logic does come uh, stacked with, uh, I think it's three or four native plugins. Um, you'd normally find them under reverb here, but not to confuse you, I've got a bunch of other reverbs that I've put there. The other way to get to them is go down to Logic there, and down to Reverb where you'll find Logic's native ones. For this example, I have chosen the Chromaverb, which has a really great chamber sounding room. Uh, straight out it loads a uh, pretty good room reverb, but that's not the one I want to use for this example. I'm going to choose a different uh, different preset, which I can find under chambers, and I really like this drum chamber. Now, you don't need to be uh, afraid that it says drum chamber, and I'm going to be using it on other instruments as well. It doesn't really matter. The main thing is it sounds good. So let's choose the drum chamber. Um, the one downside to this plugin is it is pretty CPU heavy, which means it's going to demand quite a lot of your computer's resources. One of the ways we can just um, make it less intensive is to turn off the graphic display. There's absolutely no need for that whatsoever. Another thing I want to make sure I do in this example is to make sure the wet signal is completely up because I'm sending it to a different channel. We want complete control over the reverb on that channel rather than having any dry signal in there as well. Um, then we just need to have a listen and adjust it accordingly. So let's have another listen. Okay, so obviously that's way too much reverb. Now, because we've sent 
only reverb to this channel, we can simply just drag this down and we should be able to blend it into taste. So I'm going to start with it on zero and then we're going to blend it up a little bit and see where it sits. Okay, that's pretty cool, but now uh, we have a bit of a problem in that um, what I'm hearing is that maybe there's a bit too much drums uh, being sent to that reverb and perhaps a little too much of the whirly as well. So what I'm going to do, instead of dragging this fader down, which will affect the, uh, all of the tracks together, I'm going to use this bus send here and drag that down a little bit, that down a little bit, and I like the sound of the funk lead with quite a big heavier uh, a heavier reverb on it so let's see how that sounds Yeah, cool. That's sounding uh, like I wanted to. Basically, just getting those uh, those instruments sounding like they were recorded in the same room. We've adjusted the levels slightly on each one of them. Uh, if we wanted to go into further detail, rather than um, just sending the drums as a whole, I could, in fact, send each of these individually uh, to that same uh, reverb, but with different levels from the send. That's one way of doing it. Uh, in this case, I like what I'm hearing, so I'm going to stick with that. Cool. So another way I like to use reverb, um, rather than just giving it a space that it sits in, is to uh, use it as more of an effect. So um, this funk lead bit here, I really like it, but I think we can take it one step further and play around with some more creative reverbs. Um, I already have another uh, open auxiliary channel here. It says up here that it's bus 3. So what I'm going to do is put another bus on that funk lead channel and make sure it's matched up to bus 3. And on this bus, I'm going to put a different reverb. I'm going to choose Logic's own, let's call it space design. No, no, let's go with silver verb. Great reverb as well. Um, this one, I'm going to play around a little bit with the modulation. Don't get too confused with this. It's just uh, how that reverb interacts with the space that it's put in. Don't forget, we, uh, since it's on an auxiliary channel, we want to put it uh, the wet right up, the dry right down. We've also got the option to cut out some of the lows on that reverb uh, and some of the highs. So in this case, uh, everything below 410 hertz is cut and everything above 6000 hertz is cut. I think we can probably do a little bit better than I'm going to take that back up to about 10,000 ish and this one I'm going to take up to about 600. That's generally quite a good space for reverb for me. I like those frequencies in my reverbs. I'm going to bring the pre-delay down a little bit. I'm going to bring the reflection right up uh, because we want to be more creative with this reverb. We want a bit more. Uh, all right, let's see what that sounds like. So we've got our funk reverb, our funk lead bit sending to our room, and we've got our funk reverb also sending to our, what should we call this? Let's call it big verb. Right, now I'm anticipating this being way too much, but what we're going to do is bring it right down and then start blending it in until we like what we're hearing. First of all, I'm going to solo the funk lead bit. And start bringing up the reverb.
Yeah, cool. So that's already sounding much more lively. I like it. Now, another trick I've learned uh, over the years, which works quite well, is on my actual funk lead, it's panned slightly to the right-hand side. What happens if we pan our reverb to the other side? Let's have a look. This is set up in stereo. It's a stereo reverb. I'm going to change that to a stereo pan and pan it to the equal side, uh, to equal opposite side. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, I really like that. So I did bring it down a little bit more to the left. Um, but what that did was it just opened up the space massively and we've got a really interesting sounding little groove now. So that should get you started with uh, Reverb in Logic Pro 10. If you found it helpful, please do give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. We've got some freebies in the description. And if you want to keep learning, do check out the Pro Mix Academy details to follow. Thanks for watching.